Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play some Through the Ages, A New Story of Civilization. Now, there are three reasons that I'm recording this video. First reason is, I actually love this game, I play it all the time. This is the thing that I play for like two hours a night on my laptop, um, you know, when I'm lying in bed and I should be asleep. I really, really enjoy Through the Ages a lot. Two, um, I was supposed to do a little bit of this on a live stream, uh, but we ran out of time, so I feel like, oh, I should still give people a little bit of this, because so, some people um, wanted some Through the Ages. And three, I'm still terrible at this game. When I play, like I'm going to be playing today, against um, three hard AIs over here, I, I believe I should win, you know, all things being equal, I should win about 25% of the time, right? You know, one in four, four characters. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I win a lot less than that against the hard AI. So clearly there's something I'm doing wrong because the hard AI doesn't start with any more resources than I do. They're exactly the same as me, except apparently making better decisions. So that's one of the reasons I'd want to do it on stream so I could get some immediate feedback maybe about people, what people think, uh, you know, I should be doing or changing up. I'll have to settle for some delayed YouTube comments on this one and maybe you guys can help me finally win this game. Um, oh, I'm starting the first position here. I do get first crack at uh, the set of cards. So if you haven't seen this before, this is actually a board game that's got a digital version. I know the graphics aren't terribly inspiring right here, uh, but it actually works out super duper well. On this first turn, I have a single action that can only be used to take some cards. Second player will have two, then three, then four. Again, only to take cards. So I'm only gonna get to take one card from this first section over here, but I get first dibs. Early on, grabbing an Engineering Genius card is really handy to be able to develop a wonder a little faster. Uh, Irma Growth is also a really good way to save some resources on some buildings. Uh, cultural Heritage, I don't t usually care for too much early on. Uh, the culture is is not the culture is how you win the game yes true but early on you really look to to set up your sort of economy and this doesn't really help with that with only one science frugality saves you one food i mean i do cards like frugality engineering genius and urban growth are great because it says part of an action it doesn't cost you an extra action to use these whereas cultural heritage is you do actually use it but um in this case i'm actually tempted to grab homer over here uh, he's not bad just for like a bunch of extra happy faces long term. I mean, I'm not going to say he's one of the strongest leaders, but he's not bad. Um, I'm really torn between these three and probably more over here. There's a chance I'm actually not going to be getting an early wonder. Uh, I think I actually am going to grab Homer over here. Let's go ahead and do that. So that's my whole turn. Then we get our production phase. So these are farms. These are mines. These are labs. These are temples. There's also going to be another couple of types of buildings later on, um, plus the wonders and there's military units and stuff like that. And you get production. So I have two population. These, um, these yellow circles, these represent my population in the game. Again, this is sort of a board game, card game, which is why the mechanics work like this. But I have, I have two mines. So two people, two mines, each one generates um, these blue boxes is a box of resources. And when they're on the bronze mine, they're worth one ore. Agriculture works the same way. I have two people here slash two farms. Um, and each turn, each person on here produces one blue cube on this card. And this is worth one food. Later on, uh, we'll get better mines, better farms that are worth more than one food slash ore per person on there. I have one person working in philosophy over here that generates one light bulb per turn. That's science. I currently have no one working in religion at this time. So I have currently two food, two ore, one science to spend on this turn. I have four civil actions, which are used to grab cards and play most cards in here, um, as well as develop buildings and things like that. And I have two military actions, which are mostly just used to recruit troops and play tactics. Not that I have any at this time. Traditionally, your typical first move is going to be to expand your population by spending two food to get another. These are um, idle workers that aren't doing anything right now. These yellow tokens here represent a potential um, population, this yellow bank here. It's sort of uh, the best way that the game describes it as, think of this as more like empty space or possible farmable land or something like that. As you uh, run this lower and lower and lower, what happens is um, there becomes a greater food consumption just upkeep. It also becomes more expensive to get more population and you start needing happy faces to keep your population uh, satisfied. So I have two idle population. 
Uh, typically what you would do here is you would go and build an extra bronze mine with your um, with your two ore because it's perfect. You can't build another uh, lab or a temple with two because they cost three each. So by upgrading to this, you then get three per turn, which is very convenient for upgrading your, your temples or your labs later on, which is okay. This is almost universally the, the way the first turn goes. After that, it gets a little bit fuzzier. I could put out Homer now. Um... Now he will give me an extra ore every turn for building and upgrade military units, but one ore right now won't do anything for me. I also don't need a happy face right now, so I think I can hold on to him. The pyramid is a very, very, very strong wonder. In fact, most of the people who talk about the game discuss that the pyramid is the strongest wonder, but someone actually did um, statistical analysis of winning and losing games and found out that um, I believe the Library of Alexandria turns out to be the wonder that um, most often leads to victories as opposed to pyramids over here which is kind of interesting. Now, the cards in this row cost me two civil actions to grab, and the cards over here cost me three. Um, so I could grab the pyramids, or frugality. I'm not going to grab frugality. I could grab the pyramids, or I could grab both, say, urban growth and rich land. Um, patriotism, I think we can pretty much live without. It does give you the extra action for military, which is nice. We could grab the Colossus here, which is decent for military strength and things, but I don't think is that helpful. I think mostly it's a question of do we go pyramids or do we go rich land plus urban growth? Let me consider this for a sec while I sip some coffee. I think I'm going to grab the pyramids. Although it is tempting to go the other way, because I could potentially use Urban Growth and Rich Land. I could get an extra um, temple, and while it's not super important to develop an extra farm early on, we could. But I think I will grab the Pyramids here. Because the reward for this one is it does give you an extra civil action in the long term. But you do, I'm going to have to invest a total of five. Two to grab it. That's the thing, I'm, t I'm spending two to grab this, and it's going to take three more civil actions to build the pyramids to get one extra per turn. What's the payoff there? That doesn't actually seem strong enough right now. If I'm going to be perfectly honest, I think that's one of the reasons people have discovered it's maybe not as strong as it appears. And there's also the opportunity cost. The six ore that I'm going to take to develop this, I could use to build up more of my other infrastructure. I mean, no, there's going to be a payoff. It'll pay itself off over the course of the game. All right, let's do it. Um, so I'm just going to have to end turn here. That's going to be fine. Because the game, it's hard to tell exactly how many turns the game lasts. It's a little bit um, fuzzy, but probably something like 15 to 20 turns, I think is standard. I'm, I'm trying to remember here. I might be completely off. But we will net more civil actions than we use for the pyramid. I don't know. All right, so now, because uh, I ended my turn with some idle military actions, at the end of my turn, I got to draw some of these po uh, politics cards. And before my normal action phase, I can play a politics uh, card here. And um, this is a tactic you can't really play in this phase. I could try to set up a trade rights agreement with someone, which is, you know, sort of a net benefit to both people. Um, everyone's kind of the same right now. Uh, Red, tell you what, Red, you want to do this? It'll let me use food as ore if I want, or I could flip it the other way around. One of us gets to use food as ore, and the other one gets to use ore as food. I think I tend to prefer the use food as ore side. I'll offer it. Hey, we get accepted. There we go. So we've got that. Uh, that'll go away eventually, and you can also use your political action to cancel a pact as well. Now, I don't think I'm going to use this right now, because I probably will want to, in fact, use my two food to grow my population. Uh, but let's consider... Yeah, even using the ability, I can't finish the pyramids this turn, although that's fine. Uh, probably what I do want to do is actually get my new philosopher over here. So I think we will be increasing our population. We will be developing philosophy over here so that we can get more science. So now we're developing two per turn, which is quite a bit better. Still have two actions. Still, Homer still won't help me this turn. He's not needed this turn. Um, Code of Laws is another alternative to the Pyramids, gives you one extra civil action in exchange for just science, which isn't bad. I don't think having both makes as much sense. Swordman is actually really good to grab, but I think the thing to do here is going to be, I think I will, I think I will grab Stockpile here. A little food, a little ore. That'll probably help us complete that. It does cost an action to use, but early on you can see I'm, I'm a little hard pressed to use all my actions truly. Um, and I might grab an urban growth to be able to, to build this. Or rich land to get a farm. Well, the problem is I won't have the happiness. Well, that's not true. I'll have Homer. Actually, why don't I just play out Homer? 
Again, I don't really need him this turn, but this might be a great opportunity to just get him into play. So these plus one uh, ore for military isn't going to be used, unfortunately. But yeah, I think it'll be happy that he's there. And what I really want to do at some point is replace him and slide this card underneath the wonder so that it provides plus one happiness forever. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have to end turn over here. At least I'll be drawing some more cards, so that's okay. Not using your military actions is, is okay because you get to draw cards. Not using your civil actions sucks. Every now and again, especially when you got a low-tier government like this because you're limited to how many cards you can have in your hand based on your pips, so I can only have four cards in my hand right now. Sometimes you can sort of get stuck where you don't have the resources to play anything, but your hand is full so you can't grab any yellow cards, and that's really frustrating. You might just end your turn with an unspent civil action. All right, we're going to take a look. I've got the AI turns on fast speed uh, because, you know, the animations can sometimes be long, but we're going to take a quick little gander at what my opponents are doing. So yellow is going to work on the Hanging Gardens. Good for happiness, a little bit of culture. He's got his three farms. He's got his two labs, and he's got his leader. So, I mean, pretty much the same state as me. Red over here, uh, th or three mines, uh, two uh, labs. This is just two farms, right? Yeah. And he's going to work on the Library of Alexandria, which is, you know, gives you a little science. What's nice about this is it gives you science without having to use um, a citizen to work at the Wonder. The Wonders are free. He's going to be ready to play Code of Laws. And he picked up an Engineering Genius card to help him with his Wonder, which is nice. Um, the politics cards are face down and hidden, but the regular cards are face up. Blue's got no Wonder in play. He's got the three mines. He's oh, That's interesting. He's only got the one lab. What has he done? Not much. Uh, well, he did build the extra warrior, so he's quite strong here, and he's going to get ready to develop irrigation, uh, which I don't normally prioritize that much to get some extra food, but it's not too shabby. Okay, um, we can't attack anyone with our um, aggression card over here because we're the weakest, so we're going to skip that. No one's been going through these antiquity event cards. That's crazy. Okay, Freddy Barbarossa is quite nice. We're not ready to flip leaders yet, though. Let, let me play the stockpile card. And we do want to make some progress towards the pyramid. Because the sooner we get it done... Yeah, we'll use this pact over here. The sooner we get it done, the sooner we get the action. And that's very, 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 very important to do. So I have one whole action left. My science would be enough to develop... Actually... Do I want to back up here? I'm not worried about strength yet. I mean, aggression cards might be a thing. I can defend myself with the cards from my hand. There are no events in the Antiquities deck that punish you for being, say, the weakest or anything like that. Because I was just saying, I could take the Swordman and develop the Swordman this turn. I've got enough science for it. And I've got enough resources to build the Swordman or at least upgrade him to that. Uh, but I'm not really worried about the aggression triggering. You know, I think I'm still okay with this. And then with my one action, I could grab the knights and then develop them next turn. Uh, swordmen are a little cheaper. They're one science less. They're just as strong as the knights. Um, and they upgrade nicely from your warriors. And that's another thing where, like, the, the swordmen statistically work out towards victory a lot more. Um, the difference is if you have a strategy, a tactic, that benefits from having cavalry type. And I don't have any of those. Yeah, I think it's too early to grab... Well, you know what? No, I'll grab Freddy. I can develop him next turn. Because I'll finish the Pyramids, play Freddy, slide Homer underneath the Pyramids, and then I can use Freddy to develop my military a bit better. All right, that'll do. I do have to discard a card. I'm going to discard the Aggression Raid here. I don't think anyone's played any tactics that I could just, could just copy. Because if we can get ourselves up to three infantry, then we can develop that tactic. We'll be pretty strong. All right, finally some events are being played. Development of Politics. We all draw military cards. Which means it's that much more likely that I've got uh, an extra defense card in my hand. So I'm really not worried about aggression. A pact offer. So red is offering me a pact. So each player can initiate, have one pact in play that they initiated. But I initiated one with red. Red's initiating one back with me. We'd each have an extra military action. If we attack each other, we have plus two strength. So we're vulnerable to each other. I'm feeling fine. I do have a lot of defense cards in here. And I'm going to be upgrading my defensive strength soon, so I'm totally okay with this. It benefits red, it benefits me. Hell, maybe I can sneak attack red, we'll see how it goes. Blue tried to attack yellow, but yellow defended with some cards. Alright, and we'll take another glance at our opponents here. 
Okay, so Yellow's still working on his wonder. He's got the military strength of one, no cards in hand. He did develop agriculture over here, so he's gonna have more food for more population. He's gonna be a little hurting on happiness, but he's working on the hanging gardens, which will give him happy. So actually grabbing agriculture plus that is good. He's gonna grow faster, but he'll have the happiness to maintain it. Uh, Red over here is still working on the library of Alexandra. We'll probably complete it next turn for a bit more science gain. He's already got his two uh, philosophers working, which is pretty good. He's got the code of laws and he'll have enough science to develop it for an extra action. Engineering Genius doesn't really help with this because I think it discounts it from two and it's only costing one, but maybe he'll save it for the next wonder. Um, and then blue over here is still a little weird. Got the higher military strength. It's two farms, three mines, one of those, same as me. And he's got the university. Hasn't deployed a tactic. Still a little bit odd. Okay, so in terms of, I, I'm finally gonna add a card to the event deck here. So Uncertain Borders uh, makes it so that the strongest steals from the weakest. It's not gonna trigger for a while. I might actually have an opportunity to work on something like that. Or I can put in something totally neutral, like Good Harvest where we produce food, or um, New Deposits where we produce minerals. With Freddy, there's a chance um, that it could become stronger quite faster. Doubly so if I did end up with Swordsman or something like that, or Knights. I think I'm just going to go ahead and play New Deposits. It's fairly neutral. For playing the card, because it's age one, I will score a culture for it. Hey, it's second culture, each civilization drink gains a pop. Okay. First thing I want to do for sure is I want to finish the pyramids here. Um, I... Do I want to use the pack? Probably, because I will want more minerals for developing things, and I can't grow my pop now. Although, if I don't use it, then I can grow my pop next turn. Although, there's a good chance there's going to be an event in here that... Uh, oh, no, we already had the plus one pop event. There are events in there that give us food, though, so we might still be able to grow anyway. And it's not like I have the happiness for growth. Okay, tell you what, I'm going to finish it using the pack, so I'll use food for it instead. That's going to be fine. Then what I want to do is I want to put down Freddy over here. I will use Homer's ability to improve the pyramids so that it actually gives us a happy face. I still have the plus one ore from uh, from Freddy, which is great. The other thing I can do is... Oh, wait, hold on. Let me back this up. Back up. Back up. I want to finish this using minerals. And the reason for that is... With two food, is not enough to grow my population, but Freddy's ability is the ability to use one military action to grow my population and build a military unit. It saves me a civil action every time I use this. It's also slightly cheaper. So now I can grow my population and get a warrior for only two food instead of three, and only a single military action instead of a civic and a military. Boom, done. Okay, it's nice, I'm not the weakest. It doesn't matter yet, but it will matter soon. Now, I'm actually thinking of grabbing St. Peter's Basilica here. Uh, which gives us a ton of extra happy faces over time. I could consider grabbing this iron. We're still early enough in phase one that a two cost iron might be very well worthwhile. I'm gonna have, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to grab it. Now I could develop it this turn, but I won't be able to upgrade anything this turn. So it's probably fine if I decide to grab another card um, I don't like having them sit idle. Although at the same time, I could use this civil action this turn instead of next turn. I could grab the reserves here to get a little bit more food and or ore to be able to kickstart things a wee bit better. In particular, if I don't develop a better form of farming, I may want a third farm here. And I won't have the population. Whereas if I use this, well, I have population sitting idle right now, actually. I could just grab the knights. Now, I won't be able to develop it next turn, which is no good. I could grab the, the drama or theology. Um, theology in particular might be nice. It's cheap to develop. It gives me more happiness than the temple. I do have the extra happiness from Homer over here, but it's not that much. And since I'm not grabbing St. Peter's Basilica, because uh, the cost of a wonder goes up by one for every wonder you have completed. It's either reserves or theology. I'm kind of tempted to go theology. Although, you know what, I won't be able, I'll be able to develop it next turn, but I won't have the minerals to be able to do much if I'm also upgrading my iron mines. Never mind, I'm going to grab reserves to guarantee I can build up some iron mines. I will... I will build a new warrior and drop this tactic. 
because I'm going to have enough material to upgrade iron, especially with reserves. This is going to be pretty stomping high strength. And uh, well, I won't have an aggression card, but I'll feel pretty good about dropping an uncertain border on someone. Or uh, loading this deck with an uncertain border. Hopefully this won't cycle by the time my turn comes up. I don't think it will. Uh, free warrior. I will do that. I forgot that we're in Antiquities phase, and I really need to leave some idle workers, though. If the free Temple card comes up, I'll be very upset. I completely forgot we're in Antiquities, because I'm spending so much time talking, it feels like we're so much late in the game. Also, the, um, the we didn't start cycling the event deck for a while. Ah, okay. So far, so good. So, I'm going to take the food to make sure I can grow my pop again. But on my turn, do I play an event? I think I have to. I'll be pretty salty. Now, the free temple card may not be in here. It's randomized how it works. And even if it is, there's only 50-50 chance it'll trigger. I'm gonna go ahead and load an Uncertain Borders. Ah, it's not the free temple. It's just a lot of food. Okay, so this last card could be the free temple card. We don't know. Obviously, I'm gonna spend some food, keep an idle worker around. I certainly want to develop iron, and I want to make sure to upgrade at least one mine here. Um, pay without using the pack, because I, I'm a little unsure here for a second. I could still do it. Uh, these days, I often tend to skip the, uh, the tier 1 um, government, and instead just go for the tier 2 to save some actions of, of, of converting over. Especially since I have the plus one action from the pyramid, it's a little less pressure for me to go ahead and swap to monarchy. And I'll probably stick, go to a, a, a second age government. I could develop knights next turn, although I still lack any sort of real combo for it. I'm actually wondering about grabbing alchemy. It is two actions to do though. It sucks to not get the alchemy upgrade, but the alternative is I could go and use reserves. Actually, I can't use reserves to build another mine right now. Now, I could still grab it, or I could grab printing plus, plus frugality. I think grabbing alchemy is going to be very nice. And I'm going to save my military actions here. Although, I could... Oh, no, I don't have any minerals. Never mind. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and do that. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. One of the things that's nice is by by age two, which we're not that far away from. Oh, that's the last card. Interesting. I might still use this to develop a discounted temple. So we basically we get to do one thing uh, for for cheaper. Well, we can build one new thing for cheaper. I don't want to build a new mine. I think I'm, three workers in the iron mine is going to be plenty. Uh, I could develop the technology a little cheaper, but I mean, I don't really need the science is not going to matter whether this costs four or three. It's not going to let me develop another thing this turn anyway. Um, and we are about to hit a happiness issue because if I grow my pop next turn, I'll get an unhappy face. So I think it is perfectly fine to get the discounted temple this turn rather than the free one from that we could have hit. I think we're going to be okay with that. Still costs some minerals, but I still have the reserve card, so that should be okay. But yeah, I really would like two science per turn uh, very soon, because a lot of the tech coming up will cost like at least four in age two, like four to eight kind of thing. So it becomes a convenient kind of number to produce that much. Now, somewhere in here is the uncertain borders card, and it would be really nice to be the strongest. Definitely, I don't want to be the weakest but it would be really nice to be the strongest when it came up because I would get an extra yellow token. And having an extra yellow token makes a huge difference uh, for both for happiness, for growth, for all kinds of things. There's barbarians over here. If the the civilization with the most culture is one of the two weakest game points. Now, I don't tend to prioritize culture growth early on. Um, the strongest, it will probably be blue because it's got most right now, it's making two per turn. Red as well as making two per turn here. Uh, it likely will not hurt me. It may not actually hurt anyone, but I'm going to go ahead and put that in. New deposits. We produce some uh, some ore. Sweet. Okay. So we're going to grow a pop. 
Now, I don't have to worry about keeping an idle one the same way anymore, although there are some events that eat a pop, and it's nice if you can eat an idle worker as opposed to having to dismantle a building. Hmm. There's no, con there's no wonders to grab at all. I suppose instead of growing my pop here, I could just go and use my ability here to make an extra worker. It'd be great if these were swordmen. That being said, someone might be loading this with some, um, um, some territory to grab, and that would be pretty nice. It's probably worth doing that. We can do it purely with food. I'm fine with this. Alchemy. Upgrade. Upgrade. Two actions left. Those are still tier one governments. Again, Code of Laws, I'll probably skip. Masonry is pretty nice. It's not just about the discount here. It's about being able to save actions when building wonders later on is actually really strong. Breakthrough is nice, too, because it gives you effectively free science without taking an action. Uh, printing press is good, but I don't think we're doing it next turn. We might just skip this tier of the library. I think what I'll probably do is grab masonry, and I'll probably play reserves um, for food. There we go, assuming it doesn't give me any um, any problems over here. Although that still won't be enough to grow my pop with, even with his ability here. We really need to purge some of our workers to get this going. I'm just going to grab another reserves and we're going to see what we decide to do with with it. Um, I might be able to use this aggression, which will feel good. Immigration is about things with the most happy faces, which actually there's a good chance it'll be me. Um, I'll probably keep this in case the settlement card does come up. I don't really need to defend, but I'll drop good harvest because I can't play them all. So we'll do that. We'll try to plunder if we can. If we can't, we'll play immigration. Oh, we got a raid aggression as well. There we go. Each civilization loses one pop. I have to destroy or disband something. Yep. So I'm just going to disband one of my workers then. I can get him back fairly easily. Doesn't impinge on my production. Oh, open borders has been cancelled. Okay. Uh, he's playing Genghis Khan. So he can treat infantry as cavalry for the purpose of completing tactics. He also gets bonus culture if he ends the, his turn as the strongest, which he hasn't yet. Ooh, blue's getting quite a bit stronger. Okay, let's take a quick little glance at our people here. You've got your extra farm. You're making two food in excess per turn. Uh, fairly good on minerals, well, because you've got your four mines. It's still just bronze mines. Uh, the two labs and that, you do go ahead and get a cartography here, which is going to give you a little passive strength, more importantly, passive colonization strength. Red over here did complete a second wonder, St. Peter's Basilica, which would have been nice for us. He's got a printing press set up for a little bit of science and a little bit of culture. He's getting four per turn right now. He's going to be developing iron. He's got engineering uh, genius, which doesn't help right now, though he could potentially start another wonder soon. If he grabs something like the Great Wall, he'll be pretty dangerous. Rich Land will help him with the upgrades there, and Blue is just super strong. He's got four swordsmen. Crazy. And he's ready to go for iron and irrigation over here, so he's actually going to have really good base production and a good military. That's probably where the threat from him is going to come from. So I, I can't really do an aggression move right now. I'll go ahead and do immigration, which might work for me. I'm not the weakest right now, so if we trigger uncertain borders, we're not going to get punished. It does help blue, though, and blue might become kind of scary here. Picking up a warfare might be nice. I kind of prefer the age two um, was it strategy. It's one static strength here and one extra military action, and it only costs me science, which right now I don't need much. I would love to grab one of these wonders, but I don't think I'm spending four freaking civil actions to do that. I'm doing some of that. Upgrade. I think it's going to be a lot of sort of um, basic infrastructure turn. 
there we go we've upgraded everything to iron so that's actually coming in very very strong um and that's it for my actions i could have grabbed a breakthrough in urban growth or something i think this is okay it's not a particularly exciting turn but i'm not i'm ending my turn second in strength not by much but that's okay you want to make sure you're not falling down too far we still have the, the reserves. I don't have any antiquities cards that haven't been used because age one is about to end and that's okay. Um, okay, plunder is you get resources and raid is you blow stuff up and get resources. I'm gonna get rid of the plunder. This tactic might pay off. Okay, let's see here. Um, I should probably put a cut in at this point since age one is just ending. That's a good time. All civilizations lose two yellow tokens from the yellow banks. So food is a little harder to, it's harder to grow your population, harder to keep them happy. And, um, you need more happy faces. Blue that has to discard one card, but that's not a big deal. Kind of a weak sauce card. Okay. I'm going to keep going until it's my turn again. We do have a first territory. This is not a territory that actually gives us um, any yellow pips. Not tends to be in priority, but we know there's an event that's going to uh, benefit us if we have more happy faces. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to be kind of happy about burning through these um, these cards in my hand here. I'm tempted to just like throw them all in. It's not like I really have to worry about defense. Well, yellow. No, yellow's going to attack someone else, someone weaker. Let me go and do this, just it'll be slightly less convenient for someone to pass me. There we go. And these cards are sort of not worth much. So getting rid of them is okay. But um, people can't just tie you. So if someone had like two warriors plus the tactic of plus one strength for having two infantry, they would have been able to beat me out of three if I just bid the two, but then it became harder. There's strategic territory. So I was right, people are loading these guys in. Again, we'll... Um, do we make a bid on this one? Because two's harder to beat. It's two static military strength forever, and you get more cards. And it's the population ones I really like. I'm going to make a bid for it, though. Okay. I'm not going to go... I could! I could do this, spending all my military getting points. I do get to go next, but I'll pass. I'll save my strength mostly. I'm hoping for a territory that gives us more yellow pips. Those are the really, really valuable ones. The one, the, the one shot culture one I got wasn't super huge, but the happy face is going to be handy. Uh, so we're not doing any aggression. We're just going to have to skip politics here annoyingly. Um, I might grab the Taj Mahal. All it does is a, it's a big um, culture thing. If you replace your leader this turn, it costs less. You know what? I think it's going to be okay. It's a little risky. We're gonna use Freddy one last time. I'm, oh, this is age one. I can't do the replacement tricks. Okay. Well, I'm still fine with using Freddy over here. That's okay. Um, yeah, Freddy's age one and Christopher Columbus is age one as well. So I can't replace one with the other and I'm not spending a bunch of points to go over here. Uh, great wall is a great wonder. That's a lot of extra strength. So one extra pip to do it. It's less culture, but it's really, really strong. It is an age one wonder, and I'm going to have to make sure to build it by the end of uh, this phase here. What else could I do? I mean, I could go deep for scientific method or selective breeding. Like, I'm still on regular farming. That would be really strong, but that's like a lot of actions to take. I really prefer grabbing it for cheap. Not that I'm growing right now, so that's, you know, incentive to get some sort of better farming. It actually might be worth doing. Rather than risk missing it. It's easy to miss these things, especially in a four-player game. It's easy for one of these to go by. And I skip the last type of farming. And I'm, I'm sort of I'm either gonna have to increase my agriculture if I don't grab one of those. And that's a lot of actions to do it. I'd rather just stick with two workers in farming, but have it be more efficient. I think this is it's crazy, but I think might be the right answer. I can't develop it this turn, but I could do something like masonry this turn and then still develop selective breeding next turn, which I think is okay. So I'm ending my turn in third position overall, not the worst. Um, I would love to do an enslave here. I'm going to get rid of raid. Keep this. I'm still hoping to get a yellow pip nation and that will help grab that. Not by much, but it's something. Oh, there's some 
land for me. Rebellion, no one has discontent workers. At least I didn't get punished for it. All right, yellow. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, maybe I should... Oh, I'm supposed to put a cut in here. Let me do it now before I forget. Hey, there's barbarians! So red has the most culture and is among one of the two weakest. So he loses a pop. That's great to punish people with. Love it. Okay, we'll put a cut in here. Thank you very much for watching, folks. And I'll see you guys next time.